Alright, thanks very much, Murray, for that uh, rousing introduction to the HAP program. Now, what I'm going to do today is talk to you about one of our greatest HAP technologies. Uh, I've been working with HAP for almost three years now, uh, working with our developer evangelist program, with our developer network, really working with the core EPS and services that, that HAP has to offer. And personally, I think that YQL is one of the ultimate HAP technologies that you can possibly use in this 24 hour HAP event as well as in your personal development lives. So when you want to get some piece of data on the web or match up multiple sources, it can be a very painful experience. You will go through the, the process of looking at API documentation, um, get signed up for individual keys, sign up for uh, all the stuff that you have to do to, to download the data and match Now that's where why you all comes into play. This is what the technology does for you is make it easier to go through those steps. Make it easier to authenticate uh, to particular APIs and services. And this is really the greatest benefit that we can see. And it looks like you are getting my lovely little doll. There we go. My lovely little screen and desktop background. But here we go. This is the YQL API app. What I'm going to go through today are a couple of uh, main topics. We're going to take a look at a overview of YQL, what, what the actual app project is, what YQL uh, what will do for you from a high level. We're going to jump into some, uh, some specifics, going through how to build queries on the system, how to actually uh, use our, one of our great sandbox environments in YQL. Then we're going to take a look at how to wrap your own API service within YQL, match it up with gathering yeah, data, some external data feeds, or something like that. Then we'll take a look at one of the greatest pieces of data within YQL. That's the certified JavaScript execute layer. This is going to allow you a huge amount of control over the data feed that you're bringing in. Then, you know, I understand you're just laying out all the talk and you're not listening to it throughout this entire thing. You just have to pay attention to that last slide and I go over some final lessons to get the gist of this talk. First off, let's take a look at the what you overview. Really see that what the service has to offer. Now, I've been working with YQL for over two years now and Try to think of the best tagline for what the service does for you. And just simply put, it allows you to not have to reinvent the wheel. Now, I understand that you might want to build the ultimate spray technology to grab image data from a page or what have you, but whether it's in this point where I have it or you realize, you have to prioritize. You have to utilize the best tools available to you to actually grab the data. So that's where YQL comes into play, and that's where YQL is going to provide you with a lot of benefit. You will see that it can quickly get the natural data sources and provide them back to you in a uniform format. So don't reinvent the wheel. Utilize tools like this to your benefit. All right, so what is YQL? What does it do for you? Let's take a look at the actual workflow that we're going to see from YQL. First, we have the user. Now, this is you guys as developers, you guys as users of a web page. This is the starting point. Now, the user is going to say something like, I want to access Flickr photos. Now, Flickr is our photo sharing service. And so, I want to access Flickr photos based on some search criteria, like, I want uh, photos for, uh, for a specific region, or I want photos based on some query. And then they're going to communicate this message to YQL service via a standard REST request. So they're going to issue a request to YQL service saying, I want this information. YQL as a service will say, OK, I understand your request. Uh, I understand that it's, uh, that it's a valid request, but I have no idea what Flickr photos are. Um, so, what service is going to do is to look up on its standard YQL data tables. Now, the data tables are really just, think of them as configuration files, or XML configuration files 
that tell a YQL service how to actually access data, like Flickr phones. So YQL tables will say, yes, I do indeed have a table available that shows you how to get Flickr photos from the web. So it's going to communicate this back to the service. The service will say, awesome, I have, uh, I have everything I need, all the configurations to say, I can access Flickr photos. So we just want to make a communication request out to Flickr services or whatever services it may be using in the configuration file. And the web service, the standard web service, will respond back with the Flickr folks. When the service gets this information back, they, it might manipulate the, the folks. If you have some service-side JavaScript layer built into to your table, it might uh, only return back a certain number of results that you need. But it will always push it back to you in a uniform format, like JSON or XML. Whether the service provides that or not, you can have a feed that's dumping uh, geographical information for Google's KML format, for instance, and it can convert it. So you can get this, this nice little flow of giving you exactly what you need. And then that information all comes back to the user uh, as a, in a nice response back. Now it's a good middleware layer between you and a web service, allowing you not have to not have to do a lot of heavy lifting to get started. So let's take a look, a quick look at what YQL does to actually capture it. So there's multiple different data feeds that that YQL is allowed to drop. And the way that the technology started was really just as a skeleton key on for Yahoo technologies. So we said we have a lot of technologies within YEN that we want to make it, specifically around 63 different APIs and services. So we said, we want to open this up and make it a lot easier for developers because API access can be painful. Or oh, it can be painful. All these, all these systems that attack the attack go from a regular basis can be painful. So we opened up all of our developer products in YQL, allowing you to access all that data through a standard method and not have to do with all the pains of signing up for all these keys. But as a, as a service then, it would be pretty useful for us uh, being the app service. But we know that Gap doesn't offer every single product that you or every single development service that you could ever want to use. So we need one to open this up to the web, allowing you to access a lot more data. So we open this up to external data feeds, RSS, XML, JSON, any external data feed that you might want to leverage off of and pull back into the system and match up with Yahoo data or other data, you can do that. There's even a screen scraping table, of our HTML table, which allows you to screen scrape pages based on XCAP to drill down to specific repeat values of the page. Very handy. Just something to note. And finally, as external data feeds, that would be amazing. Um, you know, Yahoo data and external data feeds is good. There's all these other other APIs out there that we, we might not want to leverage on. So we all that this system up even further in this concept called open data tables. This XML configuration wrapper on the, that basically tells the YQL service how to access uh, an external web feed, uh, web API, go through authentication protocols, things like that. Uh, so that all that information can be dragged in through YQL trees. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But as a fetching service, this would be an amazing technology on its own. But we wanted to make it more like a, a true RESTful service or, or mimic database functionality. So what we did was open up the service to not only about fetching, but also setting and deleting data. So the YQL team built in the insert update and delete functionality into the YQL team structure. So if you have a web API that allows that functionality of put, post, or delete, you can easily uh, remove data or update data or, or add new records to web services. Like, let's say you have a, uh, an external database that you want to update, like a WordPress blog, for instance, and you want to delete a, a, a post up there or a comment, you can do that through YQL. You want to access uh, Twitter and update your status, you can do that through YQL. Very easy without having to use their individual APIs. Now, the question that always comes up because YQL mimics a lot of database functionality. It had its, the syntax that we use to show, showcase what, what YQL is. It, it, it's a SQL like format. So, the question that always comes up is 
It's like well, it is. Can you use free to on it? Can you store data within the service? Uh, automatically, is it a storage engine? And the simple answer to that is no. YQL is not a database structure. It is a web service that sits between the user and the web, said web service, web API, the external data that you want to leverage off of. It just makes it so much easier to leverage off of this to these data sources. So it's such a beautiful technology in that. All right, so the overview we went through kind of the gist of what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be looking at. So let's take a look at the actual syntax, how you're actually going to implement all this, this technology. We're going to look at some of the queries in this uh, beautiful sandbox environment that that's, you're going to find so useful if you're working with this system. All right, so for fetching data, how many of you here know SQL? Or any of you a, a whole bunch of you? And those of you that don't know it, it's so intuitive that I can talk through all of this with you. So, if we want to fetch some data source from the web, the simple syntax that we're going to use in YQL is a select statement. We're just going to select some piece of data from a table. Now, the table might be an internal data feed. It might be a web API. So if the API opens up and says, you can search based on a query, or you can search based on a title, uh, that's going to be in the select statement where you select a title, for instance. You can also select star if you want all the data to turn back from the, from the actual table. You can do remote filtering of the, of the actual feed by putting it in the brackets afterwards uh, two pieces of data, or one. You, you have your starting points on the results that you want to return back. So uh, start at the zero value and return back 50 results. It's a good way of getting more than the standard 10 results that white people might return to you. Uh, now this is remote filtering. So let's say you have a thousand records or a thousand pieces of data on an HTML page that you want to scrape out. You can implement some aging model so you only return back the first 100 results and then give the option to the user to click next, and then run another white well query to grab the next piece of data. So this is a good baking model to be aware of. Then you can filter the data to get exactly what you're looking for using where, and, and or clauses. So just like you're doing this. Then you can do some local filtering using the limit and offset. So unlike remote filtering, which just gets a certain number of queries on a remote site, local filtering will actually filter results that are returned back. So let's say you have uh, 20 results that are returned back. This limit and offset that's on the screen right now will return back three results starting from the 10th result. Now if we take a look uh, at some of the other insert on the delete functionality, insert is very easy as well. We have insert into some table. In this case, it's a bit.ly URL shortener. The keys in the bit.ly URL shortener that we want to set. So our login API key and uh, long URLs so both one shorter. Then we set our values to whatever the values of those fields may be. Updates, we're updating an existing record on some web API or web source. We would just say update the table name uh, and setting a key to a particular value. You can set as many keys as in values as you want. Then you can use the where and the raw clause to filter down to exactly the, uh, the uh, elements on the API that you want to update. Much like the delete command. So delete, you would just say delete from the table name. And use where and or clauses, just like you do with update, to drill down to the exact records that you want to delete. Um, one of the other great little pieces of, uh, of information that you want to develop in the data syntax that I want to cover is the concept of subselects. Basically, all it really does, it all it really means, is you're selecting some piece of data from one table based on result sets of some other table. So in the case of this example up here, what I'm doing is I'm finding all geographical information from our geo places table, so this is Yahoo Geo Technologies, based on location from my social profile on Yahoo. So I'm saying, so, you know, at the top level, select everything from geo places, which is going to give me latitude, longitude, uh, the place name, the parents of the geo location. So if I had a town, it would be the county level, then it would be the province or state level, and the country level as we go over the chain. So we're searching for geoplaces where the search text is located in 
my social profile. So my social profile, I'm extracting the location. So the location will return back, back in my case, live in more California. So geo, uh, so we'll look at geotechnology and or geo information for the living room, which we can then use to plot a map or search for Flickr photos based on the geolocation. Very easy stuff. All right, so I cannot really go into my world without showing you some really great examples. So we're going to do some some live demos here and show you exactly what you're going to be leveraging off of when you're using YQL. So over here we have our beautiful YQL. As developer.yaku.com slash um slash yq as developer.yaku.com slash yql slash console. And what we're seeing on the screen, let me just show you a few pieces of data. Over here, up here, we have our state that we're going to be running on yql. So select, insert, update, delete, whatever we want. Over here, we have the data formats that are returned back to us, XML and JSON. Then we have the data, the, the data that's actually returned. So this is the XML or JSON feed that we that's returned from the web service or external web API. Over on this side, we have some recent queries and example queries. So these are all very helpful for you to get started. And down here, we have all the tables of data that you can learn about. Not sure if you can see it or not, but the number up there besides data tables says that we have 1,112 pieces of data that you can let drop. 100, and, 100 or so are, are Yahoo technologies. All the rest are things like, uh, like Amazon data, Facebook data, we have a ton of Google data. If you're so inclined, we also have a vital table that you can let drop of some information. So, all this information is available to you. I suggest if you have a hack, that you might want to uh, uh, let the letter of external data. Take a look at what we have available. See if there's something that you can use here. They will probably save you a lot of hours of hacking instead of having to you know, work through all that. And down here, the most important bit, is this URL at the very bottom in tiny little prints is how to actually access the white bill service. It's a standard HTTP REST request. So you would issue a GET request to this URL structure. All right. So let me, let me zoom back out here and show you a few examples. So let's say um, I want to scrape some data from the web. Now uh, our HTML table um, there at the very, very bottom, uh, if we go up the data folder and go down to our HTML, uh, HTML table, what's going to happen is it's going to load uh, a sample query. In this case, it's loading up the description of the table. So the description of the table is going to show just how to utilize the service. So let's, let's go over to a great example base that we might want to scrape. Reddit.com. If let's say I want to parse Reddit.com because I don't feel like going in the sites, I just want to let it all in my in my um, own data files or my own application. The pieces of data that you're going to need to know for uh, for how to drill down to is uh, really some denoting factor on how to actually access these types. So, so something unique, like a class. So let's go ahead and open up our inspector in Chromium. And then we can inspect these types. And we can see here that in HTML, all titles are an anchor tag with a class of title. Perfect piece of data for us to be able to utilize our HTML data. And we have a nice, nice little uh, web outage. So let me show you exactly how this, is, how this is going to look. So we would say select everything from the HTML table where the URL equals reddit.com and the extract equals to equals to all, any anchor tag that has a class equal to title. So that's really what we're going to be looking at to actually test the test the table out. 
But as the web is not, the website is not actually producing very nice results, you can see the gist of it. And basically what's going to happen is we are going to return back uh, all the title data from, or, uh, from, the, uh, from the information. So we're going to return back all these pieces of titles uh, as long as the wireless stays up. So it's a limited API, so we have to actually let it go for this piece of these, uh, this information. All right, so let's go back to the presentation since we're having a little bit of not so much luck with, with our uh, live demos. And let's take a look at uh, some of the other pieces of functionality in the well. If you want to see some of the queries, please find me afterwards. I'm happy to show you how to scrape, uh, scrape HTML data, like scrape Flickr photos based on geo technologies, uh, or do any of this, any of this information. Any sort of data that you want to let a I can show you how to do that. And very easily without having to go through all these APIs and services. So one of the pieces of data that is returned back that you would have seen in the slide demo, demo is Flickr photos. So under our flickr.photos.search table is the ability to search for Flickr photos. You can search based on information, information like, um, like geolocation, lab long, you can search by query. So you can basically search for Flickr photos for a particular region, like this region. Now the data that's actually going to be returned back from Flickr, it looks like this. So each of the results will be a photo with pieces of data. Now this is standard for the Flickr API. And it actually has a lot of information that we can utilize. It, now but you don't see a URL out there. You don't see a URL to photo, you don't see a URL to a uh, user's profile, you don't see any of the sort of data that you're going to need to build with the photos. So keep in mind that data is out there. We can construct URL structures based on those pieces of data. So it actually it's a lot easier because we have a lot of data in there that we can build. So based on the Flickr API, we can build a photo URL by just having some static text marked up with some piece of information like the farm or server, ID, secret. All this to build a photo URL. We have a photo page, so linking off of the image tag with that photo URL to a specific page which can show the full photo, as well as some many comments or information. You can build that page URL. Then, if you want to give uh, a link back to the owner's profile, the person who created the photo, which is always a good thing, you know, using the photo, you might want someone to link back to your profile just to show that you actually created it. And you can build the owner's profile based on this as well. So just by passing the owner information. So these are the pieces of data, this is how you do it. All right. So the URL query structure that you're actually going to be, um, be using. So remember that URL at the very bottom of the console system that we're going to uh, we're going to be working with. The actual REST call is going to be issued with get put post retreat. Well, there you have two URLs that you can learn from. There's query that pathwayguys.com slash v1 slash yql, which is a private issue. And then all the, you know, all the URLs to access Flickr data or any public data, uh, geo technologies, things like that, are all available uh, under slash public slash YQL. So what's the difference between the two URLs? Well, first, the private endpoints needs to have OAuth authorization implemented. So you're going to go through this quite complex OAuth process, but I'll show you a trick for actually not having to do any of that because OAuth itself can be a hack in its own where you can take all months building up that, that process if you don't are you aren't, if you aren't familiar with authorization technology. So I'm going to show you how to mitigate all that and not have to deal with it. And then you have public endpoints which uh, you can just call and send the rest of them. So you can issue in, in PHP a curl request, multi languages a curl request, uh, PyCurl in, in Python, or URL that open, uh, that URL open. Um, JavaScript, you can use technologies like YUI, y, free, you can even use jQuery, you know, it all, all leverages off that data. So, within each of these URLs, we have uh, a few parameters that pass along the query string. So, these are, the, these are the parameters that you just tap on as key equals valid, just like in the standard rest of uh, as a get, kind of the query string. These parameters, 
our queue for the query. So that would be your select, insert, copy, delete, whatever command you might want to You'll have your format, so XML or JSON, whichever, uh, whichever format you want back. You'll have your diagnostics, which diagnostics is a very helpful tool. Because if you set that, what's going to happen is you're going to get more information about the queries that you're running. But if you have a service that's running up, you can see it directly in the diagnosis. Now, if you're wrapping your own web API or web service, debug is going to be your, uh, your saving grace. Because YQL console caches your YQL tables for a certain amount of time. Uh, usually it's five minutes. But let's say you're making a bunch of hacks to your, your table, uploading it you know, every single minute. It's going to be a pain because you're not going to see any of your changes coming up. You won't be sure if it's your error or the service of error. Set debug to true, that will kill all the cache, and you won't have to deal with that. Then, lastly, you have a callback. The callback is just a JavaScript function name that you can use to, to implement JSONP or JSONPX, which is basically JSON or XML with a callback. What's going to happen is when the YQL service returns back its pieces of data, uh, so this will be your JSON or XML data structure, it will um, execute that JavaScript function that you have uh, implemented, much like an AJAX request, and the parameter that it's going to pass in is the data structure that's being returned from YQL. Very easy, very helpful. So if you are leveraging off of a service that doesn't have these callback methodologies, then you can implement JSON P and JSON PX this way. So, just something to know. Now, I said that I was um, telling you a little bit of ways to, to negate all the issues that go off. First place, I've had, I've worked with partners who have implemented a lot, and this is a lot of one, not a lot of um, I've had partners who have taken less than three hours to implement a lot of people who understand authorization I've had people who, right from scratch, have taken two to three weeks to implement Not something you want to try out and deal with on a 24 hour hack day. Trust me on this. So, the way that you can mitigate this is by using one of the software development kits that we have available in Yahoo. So, at, at uh, github.com slash yahoo are a series of social APIs. Now, uh, every single social API has a method called it called YQL. The way that you instantiate all the OAuth session and actually have the user authorize your application, now this is only if you really need some uh, piece of uh, private data like social profile or, or Facebook information that, or Netflix data if, because they use too late to OAuth sign. You can utilize our, our software elements in ActionScript, in Objective-C, Python, PHP, and Java. All these are available to you. If you're a .NET programmer, there are some examples on there as well to get you uh, pretty much all the way along as well. So you can beta right now, but it will give you all the code that you need. Now this is a simple way of, of not having to deal with OAuth, and I would suggest strongly that you do it. So let's see how how YQL can actually run, how you're going to work with it. Now let's see if our little website is up and running again. Let's go. If not, we'll do some offline and off, uh, offline and off, uh, online and down. A little bit magic. Working but not Okay, so it looks like we're still, we're still down, but I'm going to show you exactly how you can build a query. So, Going to write console in a Python script, now this is going to be dead simple. If I create a new Python file, so yql.py, no, actually, that's my finished example in case I mess up. So let's not go into that. Create a new file, and what you want to do in order to build yql, Python, PHP, what have you, I'll just show you in Python really quick is utilizing the sample library, the uh, YQL sample, the uh, Python sample library, you, will, you can utilize your element, which will allow you to run a get request against YQL service. 
you can import JSON. Now, JSON isn't part of that standard library, so if you search for uh, Python and, uh, and JSON in your favorite search engine, in which I'm guessing is all happy here, right? Okay, so if you uh, if you download, you download that and just have the JSON files available. Now, the way that it's actually going to work is you can specify a URL, and the URL will be a string like the uh, Yahoo Yahoo So API.com. So that will be your full REST website, the very bottom of the console system. Uh, you know, I'm not going to type out the entire URL, but it's uh, at the very bottom just copy and paste that in, no problems. Then, we, all we need to do is open up a new file handler, saying urllib.url open, and pass in our URL. What this is doing is making, initially we get request to that URL structure, basically opening the file, or in this case, some sort of external web feed. Then, specify the data that we want. The data would be um, our JSON. So we're converting the JSON structure. If we return back a JSON feed, uh, if we return back an XML feed, we don't really need that. But in, in most of the cases, you're going to return JSON and dealing with that. So you need JSON feed in a um, the file handler dot read. So you're reading in the contents of the file, whatever that may be. So basically that came off the web API. And then you can just simply print data. Now, what you would see if I ran this in the console and it actually connected to the Python service through uh, the wireless connection is that uh, the data structure or the raw JSON data would be displayed on the console uh, using the Python service. It's very easy to do this. In, in uh, um, 1.3, you have this, this native YQL method built into the JavaScript layer. Now, if you are utilizing what you all strongly, strongly suggest that you stay for weeks talk today on what uh, you are and all of the, uh, all the talks around what you are today as well. Very helpful language for being able to let a of uh, visualization data um, and, and uh, anything that you need to learn what you are. Where what you are is this awesome data representation, what you are is the uh, is very helpful Alright, so that's a little bit about how to actually run the service. So now we know uh, how we're actually going to let it off the data service. Now let's take a look at how to actually track your own web API. You're using our web developer open data tables, which are basically just an XML configuration. You're using the standard table configuration, the XML node, the uh, root table nodes, specifying the XML namespace. We have two nodes in there that we care about. Meta and bindings. This will basically tell the like, white will service everything that it needs to know to access the web source of the web API. Now, if you take the meta, it has a lot of meta information about the data. It'll have things like author information, send documentation. And when I click on one of the tables in YQL and the YQL console, uh, a sample query will pop up. So it's really great to populate that so that people who are utilizing the table can quickly figure out what it's supposed to do. But what really tells why to go on the service, how to run a web API or web source, is the bindings node. If we expand that out, we can see that we have a root select node here. You can change that to the insert, update, or delete, whichever technically whichever request you want to run. Select is usually the most common because it, not all web APIs want to support that means that are the delete feature. We can specify a type path in there. So let's say I have, uh, I'm under the of some external Yahoo data, uh, or Yahoo web API. Now, in the web API, in the external structure that's returned back, or a JSON structure, we have this root node called call. And then underneath there we have a chart node called chart. And then that's where all of our data that we want to let it off is. Now we're going to call that we can share it. It's just diagnostic information. So we can specify the other path to drill down to the bit to talk about child and utilize child as the groups know. Very helpful for this to, to mitigate a lot of the data that's returned back that you might not need from your external data source. 
Then we have produces, which shows whatever the uh, XML or um, JSON produces. And underneath that, we have a URL structure. So the URL structure will actually be the URL that we're going to make request. So this is our external link of the context feed. It could be a web API, which is going to get request. So you would specify the URL that you want to use. In this case, we just have some sample URL passes up there. Now you can see in the curly braces that there's a, a user value. Now when we curly braces, there's a special note about the URL. If we take a key value that we see right below there in the inputs and specify the ID as the same as that uh, value that's in curly brackets, we can see that we can replace whatever is in, in that URL with whatever the user specifies. So when the user specifies, select star from my table, my table, where, where user equals whatever, the user value that the user specifies, that person specifies, will replace it to the URL. And then that new URL is called. So it's a little bit of a good way to provide some dynamic value in there. So that's just one thing to do. Now, if you want to utilize these open data tapes that are Apple Web or Web API, you have a couple of choices. You have the XML file. Uh, you can come with the XML file to our GitHub community tables at github.com slash yql slash yql dash tables. Now this, you can just upload it there and then we'll push it into our community tables. Or you can upload it to your own website, web service, whatever you have available, and use the yql use class. Uh, we'll look at that question for afterwards, but thank you. Um, so, Method one, uploading to YCAD to GitHub. At our GitHub location, you can just download, you can just fork our repository, just make the changes to the new table that you want and push it up there. But I strongly suggest you don't use that for this happen. Now, the reason is because you would need to push this request, we would need to insert it into our repository, then we would need to manually update our community tables. Usually the process takes uh, 48 hours to do it at the once every 48 hours. I wouldn't suggest doing it tonight because uh, you're going to have to. Yeah, you want to do this quick. So method two is what you should use, which is the use class. So in our YQL console, as you saw, utilizing the uh, YQL syntax, we can specify use the URL to our XML file, our XML config file that we created, as our table name, semicolon. Then you say select star from that table. It's a very easy way to, to quickly implement this technology. Now we went through the uh, three specifics of open data table now. Go over uh, what execute does. So execute is a server side JavaScript layer that's going to allow you to manipulate the entire data structure that's turned back to you very quickly. We load up our standard XML config file loading up the bindings node. And where the execute layer is going to fit is right underneath the select node, just like the URLs and the inputs. Now, if we expand that out, we can see that it's server side JavaScript. Wrap your server side JavaScript in C data tags so that we can quickly uh, and easily parse out the JavaScript as JavaScript and not confuse it with uh, a lot of the older data table. So that's why we wrap it in C data tags. So it registers it as, as actual JavaScript. Now some of the things that you can do in here very quickly are things like uh, this, what the user specifies in the actual console or when it says select star from the table where um, and almost where and more clauses, everything that the user specifies, you can get via the inputs associated with array. So you say inputs uh, and then the key value that you're looking for. You can also have data before X support, right? And you can build into the service that you have That means XML is going to be built on the fly in JavaScript. Now, if you change the data structure of a, a root API or a service, the data that's returned back, you can uh, quick, uh, quickly change the response structure that's returned back on quite well using the response object. You can set this to a new node, you can set it to an empty node, you can set it to anything you want. But the response object is what's going to be returned back. Now we can do so much more with the quite well get rest and issue rest requests. Uh, you can uh, you can run another white well console you can, or white well uh, request. You can filter data. There's a lot of stuff available on documentation that if you use the service, I've learned to use it. When I build that in any advanced 
table, I usually cut up the URL and just do all my, my, all my execution of the table within the service that drives from there. It's very helpful. So we went through all the items of my QL. Now, if you were uh, if you were asleep during the conversation, time to wake up. There's just a couple of notes to get the gist of what I was talking about. First off, for Yahoo services, Yahoo APIs, one of the world's amazing skeleton team. So you don't have to deal with all the APIs, data feeds, external data, 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 getting the data out of your stuff. It can quickly learn off the data for you to utilize. The you know, data table structure is a wonderful method. If we don't have an API available, if there's a specific API that's only available for Romania that has some, some specific Romanian history data or something like that that you want to wrap, uh, I've done some suggestions about the data tables for it. I can help you configure it and configure that very easily. The execute node is wonderful for manipulating the data with that to turn back from the API or to turn back to the user. So if you want to match it up with some geographical information from our geo tables quickly, you can do that. And finally, don't do the co-op. Co-op sucks okay, as far as hacker technology. If you have to go through that in 24 hour event, it's painful. It's a wonderful authorization system. It's a wonderful open authorization system but it sucks for hacking quickly because it's a lot of signing. Don't deal with it. Use the SDKs. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of painful efforts and it'll save you a lot of trips to us for helping through the uh, signature churches. So some of the links that, uh, that we're going to let you know about are the links to this, uh, this actual presentation. You don't have to mark anything down. All the APIs and services that we offer in one hand, you can let it off of using the actual um, and you can go to developer.yahoo.com slash everything.html. YQL.mutation is developer.yahoo.com slash YQL. The console is slash console after that. And then the GitHub accounts where we would love to get your new APA, your new open data tables, your new web sources, is available at github.com slash YQL slash YQL. Here's the link to the presentation. Should you uh, want to download it and get all this, this information, a lot of the hacker, um, a lot of app data that's available in here uh, to get started very quickly. Here's my contact information. Twitter's a really good way of getting a hold of me. I'll usually respond back very quickly on a regular basis, unless I'm traveling. Um, and then my phone is also a good, a good method. So these are some of the great things I like to all And honestly, this would place so much money to all in my life. It's so much easier. I have thousands of lines of code to do everything from screen scraping to doing the no-law process, et cetera, et cetera. Why do you also replace this? And it's done a better job than I could have ever done in my own development. You're learning off of tons of Yahoo cloud technologies here. The back end, we can process data very quickly, return back to you in a very streamlined way. You don't have to do this yourself. It's not, it's not worth it. Just deal with what we just utilize YQL to make your lives easier. It's a free technology for you to use. Now, for any questions that you might have, uh, we'll reserve them for now. But where these balloons are, the balloons that the balloons are the reserve table that's just over there is where we'll be hanging out. Just look for us and read and research. Almost all of us can help you out with YQL in some way or another. If they can't, they'll get to someone that will. Now, I would strongly suggest that this is a technology that you can explore if you want to have another drop of some external data. Thank you very much, everyone. It's been a pleasure speaking with all of you.